I hope you guys are ready. Things are about to get weird. Yeah. Okay. Hey everybody, how you doing? Uh, today's video, we're going to be talking about Lindbergh, uh, the Southern commander of the Revolutionary Army. I'm sure plenty of you are already familiar with Lindbergh. Uh, for those of you that are not, well, this is going to be a great experience for you. But even of uh, those of us that are aware of who Lindbergh is, I feel like it bears repeating. Because Lindbergh's character, when you actually say it out loud, is one of the most absurdly awesome things in One Piece. I said that, that... You just have to take it in every time he shows up, right? It's like, okay, imagine if you had a roommate that was a robot dinosaur. Okay, now that's pretty weird just out of the offset, but you're not, like, you haven't just met him. Like, he was your roommate for, like, a while. Like, you've had a robot dinosaur roommate for, like, three years or something, so to the point where you would get used to it. But every now and then you have to just tell people... I have a robot dinosaur as a roommate, all right? It's just weird. It's just awesome. Okay, so Lindbergh is a cat mink, just starting off with that, cat mink, which basically makes him a furry. Hashtag not a furry, but it makes him a furry. Um, he is a anthropomorphic cat. Okay, just that's, that's, start, that's baseline, all right? But on top of that, he's also a commander in the Revolutionary Army. So, you know, he has that accolade. He's also a genius scientist that specializes specifically in, like, steampunk kind of inventions, okay? So, when Lindbergh invents something, it's gonna have, like, clocks or gears. Like, that's the basic rule for steampunk. I, I love steampunk. The basic rule is just attach a clock or a gear or, like, a wind-up key from, like, a toy on it, and then, boom, the more of that, the more steampunk awesomeness you get, okay? So, genius scientist steampunk that invents like crazy weapons like the cool shooter which is like a ray gun that fires like frozen bullets and like freezes people right not really a ray gun it's more of just like ice bullets but freezes anything it hits and uh, also a jet pack so let me just yeah roll that back so you understand entirely here okay he is a genius cat mink scientist that invented a steampunk jet pack that he flies around in and he is the, like, the southern commander of an entire army of revolutionaries. I don't, um... 50-50 shot, this has alcohol in it. It doesn't, but you don't know. Okay, so, um, yeah! <laughs> I love Lindbergh, you know what? It's like... He only showed up, like, a few times. Like, he showed up at the uh, Lucia Kingdom along with the other commanders. That's when he, we got introduced to him, Chapter 904. And then he appeared later during Reverie, but even Reverie itself was a pretty short kind of mini-arc there. So we haven't really got that much of Lindbergh, but... Am I the only one that thought, like, the second he showed up, I'm like, oh, oh, we're gonna have so much fun with this kitty cat. This is great. Like, I don't care. You know, he, he could, he, like, the potential here is insane here. Because, listen, okay, yeah, we've had a lot of other characters in One Piece that are really techie, like, scientists, like Frankie, for example, uh, Caesar Clown, Vegapunk, of course, even though we haven't met Vegapunk yet, we've definitely met a lot of his inventions, like the Pacifistas and all that stuff, okay? But never quite the same kind of steampunk level that Lindbergh has. I love that Oda did that. Oda could have easily made him like, all right, I'm going to make him a scientist, kind of the same deal with Vegapunk. But no, he decided to throw that extra spin on it. Like, let's make Lindbergh different. Let's make his science, his inventions, just a little bit aesthetically different from the pacifistas or Frankie's like cola powered cyborg weapons and stuff. Okay. And uh, we didn't really have like a mainstream, like, you know, steampunk character in One Piece. So I'm loving this. I'm loving it so much. Also, the staple of uh, the Revolutionary Army is basically the Oliver Twist hat. Like, you see Sabo wearing it and everything. You know, like, please, sir, can I have another? You know, and so it fits so well with Steampunk, you can adapt this hat so easily. So it just, that even works more. Like, Oda already set up the groundwork for Lindbergh when he got to him. He's like, yeah, this is gonna be great, okay? But, uh, yeah, okay, so a jet pack, and of course the jet pack is huge, and it has, like, steam shooting out of it, so it's not just, like, a jet pack activer, you know, to infinity and beyond! No, it's like activating jetpack and it's like the freaking TARDIS console where he has to like spin things and like, you know, pump a freaking key in or start the bellows and then, you know, a little gauge starts like ding ding and then like steam shoots out and he's like, ha 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 ha, Lindbergh awaits! 
He flies through the sky. I love it, man. I love it. By the way, um, this is just a public service announcement. Okay, I don't own cats. I'm more of a dog person. This is Duchess. She's my boxer. She's adorable, of course. But if you have a cat and you can't see what your cat's doing right now, I would suggest go and check to see, you know, just to make sure that it's not building some sort of, like, steampunk weapon in your home. You know, those cats, man. I don't even know if it's the fact that uh, Lindbergh is a mink that allows him to make the steampunk. It might just be his cat nature alone is enough to develop steampunk-based weaponry. So just keep an eye on your feline, all right? Okay, cool. And report back to me on what's going on. But anyway, okay, Lindbergh. Um, I don't even know where to start with him. Okay, okay, we'll start with this. When we first got to see Lindbergh, and the fact that he was a member of the Revolutionary Army, I was like, I was immediately just drawn to Vegapunk, okay? I've had that theory for a, a long time now. A lot of people have had it that Vegapunk is connected to the Revolutionary Army in some way. Uh, that's not even really so much of a theory as it's pretty much confirmed through Kuma because Kuma was worked on by Dr. Vegapunk. That's what turned Kuma, or that's who turned Kuma into a PX Zero. But also going along with that is like desires and wishes to guard the Sunny programmed into his body, you know, when uh, Vegapunk punk turned him into a uh, pacifista so uh, like if vega punk was completely loyal to the world government and to the marines why would he do that why would he risk that he'd be like vega punk if he was completely loyal to the world government he'd be like kuma you have intel on where the thousand sunny is located we got to find out immediately about all that stuff i'm not going to program for you to protect a pirate ship you know that doesn't make any sense so i guess you could just write it off and saying vega punk had a bit of humanity in him where he was like all right i am loyal to the world government but i'm also literally robbing the humanity away from Bartholomew Kuma and then that's kind of messed up here with the world government's making me do even though if Kuma consented to it that's still pretty messed up so all right as your like last wish I will program that like subroutine into you to go and protect the thousand sunny until one of the straw hats returns I guess you could have just said it was humanity but considering uh you know that just the case that uh Kuma used to be a member of the revolutionary army and then went over to the world government for some reason that we don't know and then Vegapunk was working on him but he was still an ally you know like that makes me think like yeah Vegapunk is like a sleeper agent for the revolutionary army Kuma was working very closely with him and uh they're gonna do like an execute Order 66 sort of deal later on where like all the pacifistas are going to turn on you know the, the world government or something that's like this ultimate end game strategy that Vegapunk is working on along with Kuma I also think that you know maybe Kuma's humanity might be gone but his things like his memories and personality might have been programmed or saved somewhere maybe in that bible he always carries around so he opens up the bible and he's like loading Kuma personality Oh, hey, Vonkov, how you doing? It's been a while. So that could be something like that. So I immediately connect things back to Vegapunk, okay? Vegapunk is a genius scientist, and Lindbergh is a genius inventor, steampunk scientist, okay? So those two immediately connected there. Um, if Vegapunk really did work for the Revolutionary Army to begin with, let's just start with that. Let's say, yeah, he was at the future land of Baltimore, um, then at one point, maybe the Revolutionary Army reached out to him, and then he started working for them, like, under the cover, and then the world government got in contact, and he's like, hey, if you go and work for the world government you'll be our man on the inside and Vegapunk is one of those people that he is legitimately a super genius he can come up with inventions and things like 500 years above time that's why we have like cyborgs and terminators in the one piece world because they they basically are terminators they got the heads up display like scanning 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 target acquired monkey d luffy bounty 1.5 billion you know that's what they do right hasta la vista rubber man okay so it, it's sort of a situation where it's like the world government like, even if they were worried that he could be working for the Revolutionary Army, they still need him, because there's only one of Vegapunk. I mean, yeah, Lindbergh is a, is really smart with his inventions. Frankie was able to turn his, himself into a cyborg from a bunch of scraps on an island, and I'm not still sure how that works. Oh, that's also powered by Coca-Cola, or Pepsi. I think there, there was actually a Pepsi that was sponsored by Frankie, so I guess the soda that powers Frankie is Pepsi, not Coca-Cola. But yeah, there's a lot of other geniuses in the One Piece world, but Vegapunk goes above and beyond that. I mean, he's next level. Like, like Vegapunk's the guy that, like, you could say he created the internet and, like, smartphones in the One Piece world. And I could kind of believe that he could do that, you know? So it's like the world government wants him. The Revolutionary Army wants him. Everybody kind of wants Vegapunk. Can you imagine? Well, I wonder what Vegapunk wants. Maybe Vegapunk is like, I don't want to be for either side. I just want to go back home and work on that giant heating thing to make the people on my home island happier. That's all I want to do. I don't want to get involved making world-destroying super weapons.
things or destroying the world government or creating giant cyborgs out of giant bear people. I, I just, I just, I just wanted to be a dentist, guys, you know? Um, but no, yeah, yeah. So that connects that back to there. So let's just assume that Vegapunk, if he did work for the Revolutionary Army to begin with, he was the one that taught uh, Lindbergh all the stuff that he knows. Now, Lindbergh, of course, being a mink, would have definitely originated from Zoe. All minks are born there. Um, but, you know, they're allowed to leave whenever they want. So I would really love to, there's always like a special circumstance why ever the, the, the minks leave their island. Like with the, um, you know, they had the expedition party with Pedro and Zeppo. You know, they went out to try to research the Poneglyphs. Uh, then, of course, you have Beppo that wanted to go after his older brother Zeppo. And so he fell off of the elephant. Peckoms went to go join Big Mom's crew. Um, you know, and then Carrot went with the Straw Hats to Wano. So there's always like a good reason why the minks leave. Inurashi, Nekamamushi, they left to go and journey the sea to discover all the islands in the world, right? So I'm sure there's probably another reason why Lindbergh left. It's probably very tragic and sad, given the fact this is One Piece. You know, he might have been like, Lindbergh was always like this very uh, curious-minded mink, you know, even though he was in, because the minks are not super technologically advanced, really. They live in a pretty basic city, honestly. Um, in terms of architecture, it's very interesting because of the way that, you know, Zunisha sprays up the water and they have all the aqueducts that drain it out of the city. Hey, who knows? Maybe um, Lindbergh, when he was living on Zoe, maybe he would have uh, worked on part of the aqueducts to really improve the drainage and all the stuff of the island, you know? It's like he has that inquiring, kind of inquisitive, like, you know, um, craftsman kind of mind. He just doesn't have the techniques or the, or the um, equipment to work with. Kind of like Chrome in Dr. Stone here, okay? Uh, he does the best he can with what he's got, right? And I could see maybe Lindbergh every night, he stares up at the stars in the new world, and he's like, ah, I want to journey out there someday, and you know, there's more to it. And so maybe one day he created like a jetpack, you know, I've invented a plane out of coconuts and freaking, you know, uh, horse fur. Horse fur, horse hair. I've invented a plane out of coconuts and horse hair. Who wants to test it with me? And all the minks are just like, yeah, that's, that's, that's okay. And, you know, Lindbergh's like, ah, you fools! Onward and upward! He gets like five feet off of Zunisha and he's like, we're doing it! We're doing it! And then the flame just crashes into the water. But he manages to survive in the wreckage and he, he washes us ashore, you know, and the Revolutionary Army find him, this soaked cat in the water. He's like, what, what, huh? He's like, hi, how you doing? I'm Lindbergh. Actually, you know what? I pulled that out of nowhere, but that would tie back to the fact that he's named after Charles Lindbergh, I guess, the Spirit of St. Louis. Um, not the first person to make a transatlantic flight, but the first solo person to make a transatlantic flight back in 1927, I believe? Um, and also, I believe that was the longest flight recorded at that time. Charles Lindbergh, Spirit of St. Louis. So, yeah, that, that was kind of, you know, <laughs> I invented a plane and he got off of Zo. It's kind of like that scene in Madagascar 2, you know, Escape to Africa, you know, where they get the plane and they just, like, fire it through a giant slingshot and it's like, woohoo! And it, it doesn't get very far. Maybe it might have been something like that. Man, that's that's not really so much tragic. That's just kind of wacky and cartoony. But look at Lindbergh! How could you look at him and not think wacky and cartoony? You know, like, like Tom from freaking Tom and Jerry right like maybe come up with some crazy uh you know elaborate trap to catch jerry or something that involves a rocket i think i'm confusing tom and, and wiley e. coyote there but i'm sure tom also did something really elaborate to catch in jerry at one point um okay so anyway yeah um what other inventions would you like to see Lindbergh display you know he's got the cool shooter right it's a gun that shoots ice bullets fine he seems to be a pretty good shot with that as well so he invented that um he had the jetpack of course uh he also invented the speaker system in Karasu's, like, you know, plague mask, so Karasu, because he, he speaks very low, Karasu is definitely the ASMR member of the Revolutionary Army, so he can click that on, oh, hello there, Lindbergh, how are you doing today, and you can actually hear him then, so he's capable of all that stuff, um, you know, you'd figure if you did have a steampunk scientist working on your side, you'd figure that the Revolutionary Army would be a lot better outfitted, and, and to be fair, you know, we've never really seen the Revolutionary Army in, like, full scope. We've seen them scattered, or the commanders doing their own things. We've never seen, like, Dragon hold up the flag, and we see, like, a big double-page spread of the entirety of the Revolutionary Army behind him, and he's just like, MEN, WE CHARGE FOR MARIZWA AT SUNRISE! And then all of, like, the hundreds, the thousands of members of the, uh, the Revolutionary Army behind Dragon, and, you know, you got Sabo and the commanders and Koala, like, leading up front, they're all like, YES! 
Although there is the um, the people that like the uh, the, the co commanders, the vice commanders that work directly under the main commanders. Um, the one that works directly under Bello Betty, I forget her name right now. I think it just means duck in Japanese. Um, so Kamo, maybe I think Kamo means duck, but it's it, it, it ties back to duck in some way. Uh, she does have a cyborg arm, so probably created by Lindbergh in that regard. So whenever you see any sort of like tech uh, technological advancements in the Revolutionary Army and a sort of like artificial limbs or a weird weapon. Yeah, probably invented by Lindbergh. Even Morley's like pitchfork, his trident that he carries around. It has like weird tubes and like uh, pipes and vents coming through it. That was probably also modified by Lindbergh. So, inventions. All right. The more ridiculous and like esoteric, the better. Even if they're not very practical on the battlefield. Okay. Like, so for example, let's say Lindbergh invents like some kind of explosive, like a grenade. Okay. You could keep it simple and just like, I have a grenade. And then throw it in the battlefield. But no, 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 no. No. Let's steampunk the hell out of this, okay? Let's make a really large grenade that Lindbergh has to first take a small ball or something, right? And he has to, like, put it into the cylinder and then lock it and then shake it up like a paint can and then turn a key. And then there's, like, a little gauge on the side of it, like, pressure raises. And then he's like, here you go! And then he tosses it into the battlefield. Um, he's a mink, so that means he has electro. This actually takes to a whole new level. I mean, yeah, you could think of really cool stuff, like he has an ice gun. So why not make an electrical gun that's just powered on his electro or electric like electricity sword like this really Convoluted sword he pulls out. It's got tubes and things stretching all over the place connecting into his arm But then phew, it shoots out like electricity. Yeah, you could do stuff like that cool stuff, too but you figure he's an inventor and you know a lot of your inventions need to run on electricity and you seemingly have, not, not infinite, but you have a lot of this static electricity just clinging to you. We haven't really seen an upper limit with the Electro from Minx. So, you know, it's never been like, uh, you know, Carrot was uh, uh, fighting in Totland and she's like, guys, I'm almost out of Electro. You know, somebody get me a balloon so I can rub it up against my bunny body. And I, okay, I said that a little bit too erotically. I'm, hashtag not a furry. Rub it up against my body and then I can charge up more static electricity and I can get more Electro. Um, so I, I guess in the context of manga, could Minx just generate like maybe a constant stream of electricity from their body? Um, if that's the case, all the stuff that uh, Lindbergh has strapped to him, that just might run off of his own power supply, right? Actually, Minx becoming in inventors and scientists makes a lot of sense in that regard. I feel like I'm playing D&D right now. I really do. It's like, what's your character? Oh, I'm a mink steampunk scientist. I took the steampunk class. I'm like, oh, cool. All right, that's nice. Actually, I was playing with a group a couple of weeks ago, and uh, there was someone that was playing as a flying squirrel, like not a flying squirrel human, just like a flying squirrel, like this big. Uh, who was also a steampunk scientist, and so everybody in the party was completely cool with it, like, just thought it was a regular squirrel, and I was the only one that noticed, like, every time I turned around, that this, this squirrel was just, like, tinkering and inventing stuff in the background, I'm like, does no one see this? And everyone's like, no, like, because, like, we rolled perception, like, I rolled really high, and everyone else failed, and just like, okay, I'm the only one that notices this, this freaking squirrel back here tinkering with stuff, okay? So, yeah, um, that, that, that's how I feel right now, okay, but yeah, just really elaborate and just esoteric devices um i would love to see like if there's anybody that's going to create airplanes in one piece i would love it for it to be vegapunk but i think i would like it more to be Lindbergh. Lindbergh might be able to invent like a giant dirigible where like the revolutionary army gets on and just sails directly to marie let me ask you if Dragon is planning on taking down the World Nobles, if he's planning on destroying the Tenryubito, they're probably not going to leave their city. I mean, unless, like, like Dragon or, the, like, Sabo burns it down, they're not going to evacuate Marijua. So you probably have to take the fight to them, but there's no, you know, flying machines in One Piece that are readily available, so you'd have to build them. I could see Lindbergh and Vegapunk maybe working together, create like a giant dirigible, and then pile the revolutionary army into it, and then so like, you know, manage, make, make a cloaking device or something. It's One Piece, you know? Lindbergh creates the steampunk dirigible, Vegapunk creates the, the freaking chameleon circuit or whatever, and then they fly above the clouds, and by the time the freaking, you know, guards at Marie Joie are like, what the hell is that? You know, it just crashes into the side on top of the red line, and then the entire revolutionary army get out, and it's... It's party time, boys. Cinch up your apple sacks. We're going to war. You know, like, I, that, that's a little bit maybe ridiculous, but Lindbergh himself, I'm just going to reiterate, steampunk 
kitty cat scientist with a jetpack is ridiculous, okay? So, yeah, I, I, I want to see more stuff like that in the future from him, okay? But, uh, yeah, anyway, uh, let me know what you feel below about Lindbergh's character, and uh, keep an eye on your cats and report back to me if anything weird's going on. Uh, yeah, this will be Teching signing out. I guess we're doing a series on the Revolutionary Army Commanders now, because we did a uh, video on Dragon yesterday, Lindbergh's today. Kind of already talked about Karasu, so we'll talk about Morley and then Bello Betty's boobs after. I mean, Bello Betty. We'll talk about Bello Betty after that. All right, so we're all good? All right, cool. Uh, Teching signing out. Have a good one.